Technology is a beautiful thing. So many apps for productivity, time management, reading, handwriting, drawing, meditation, entertainment. It can be overwhelming to select the best. Today I'll talk about six applications that I find essential in my life. This video is brought to you by Short Form. More on them later in the video. I usually wake up around 6 a.m., prepare a nice cup of coffee, and sit down and read until I finish my coffee. It's the best. I wouldn't say I don't like normal books anymore, but ever since I started reading in digital format, I just don't do it anymore. The Kindle app is just more practical for me because I move frequently. Carrying a big library with you is not ideal. And I also find myself retaining more information because you have the highlighting feature. And if your device lets you use a smart pencil, you can take notes within the app. Great. Right, sometimes I like to go back to my books because I tend to forget what I read, but most of the time I don't want to reread the whole book because I'm not a fast reader. It's one of the reasons I use Short Form. This app makes great non-fiction book guides covering all the book's best ideas in a short and simple format. One thing I dig about this app, the audio feature. Sometimes I listen to these audios at the gym or when cooking, and I get the book's most important info in about 40 minutes. Let's face it, non-fiction books are boring but you need them. Recently, I've been quite stressed because of work and you know, life can be overwhelming at times, every day. I know breathing is important. After all, there is meditation, yoga, and all of these beautiful practices that make you feel better and are related to breathing. They must be onto something. So I found this book guide Breath by James Nestor and I learned important stuff. It's no secret that we're all meant to breathe through our nose, but nearly half of all people do it through the mouth. Breathe, I mean. Come on. And the thing is, when we're stressed, we tend to breathe faster. Quick breathing equals to more stress because our lungs only absorb about a quarter of the oxygen we inhale. So if you want to feel better, first, don't breathe through your mouth. Second, slow down and breathe less. You'll feel better. And if you struggle at night, tape your mouth. You're going to improve nasal breathing and snore less. Important for your partner. Short Form drops new book guides and articles every week on most topics people care about. Business, marketing, health, productivity, self-improvement, psychology, and many more. To get a five-day free trial, you can use my special link. I'll leave all the information in the video description down below. Moving on. Music is essential, sets the mood for the day. If you don't listen to music, what's wrong with you? There was this video where I said I use Apple Music because I have Apple devices. I've been using this app for more than five years. All my music history is in here and I don't want to start from scratch. I'm not saying it's better than any other music streaming app, or is it? I know nothing about Spotify, but apparently, according to this community, Spotify sucks. What's your take on that? If you use Apple Music, here are some playlists that I enjoy. Bitstrumentals, great for reading, work and relax. Creative focus, hardcore concentration, future funk, friends, parties, or you know, if you want to dance a little, jazz and bossa nova, wine dates. Moving on, I used to do all my sketches and drawings and notes. Now, Apple recently released, not so recent, but you know, me, Freeform, a more complete app for sketching and gathering ideas. It's similar to Notes, but it has more features. It's kind of like a whiteboard with an infinite canvas. So for example, I like to do my thumbnail sketches here. You have a lot of drawing tools. You can zoom in and out, something I couldn't do in Notes. Since it's an infinite canvas, I can add more elements to the board, photos, shapes, sticky notes. That's cool. It makes it easier to lay out more content and then visualize it on a bigger screen as a whole project. That's why I now use Freeform instead of Notes. I'm still getting to know this app, but it's been a good experience so far. Next on the list, Rice. It's a time management app that tracks the time you spend on websites and all the apps on your laptop in real time. If you follow the Pomodoro technique, this app works great for that. It has a timer and shows you a breakdown of your sessions. It tells you where the time goes and how productive you're being or unproductive because you get to know what websites and apps are distracting you while you work. I started using it a couple months ago and it changed the way I work for the better. I have a healthier relationship with work these days. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I'm on the fence about the productivity culture. I am more on the side of prioritizing rest and working smart, not hard. I don't want to be a hustler, always working. I want to get things done, don't get me wrong, but I also want to enjoy my life. Finding work and life balance. I have a long way to go, but I'm working on it. And that's why I use this app. It's a good one. Last but not least, 
Notion, the godfather of all apps. I use this application for my weekly to-do content calendar files and links manager, mood board, daily journal, reading list, and many more. I'm not going in detail about Notion because I've made many videos about it, but I'll leave the links to those videos in the description down below in case you're interested. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.